So working with institutions, um, we're, we're keen to present learning analytics as a holistic solution. So it's not about um, the technology piece which we've mentioned. There, there are lots of different places where students can get support in a university. Um, one of the challenges for many universities at the moment is that these places are not actually connected up. So we do find data in, in interesting places, uh, a spreadsheet, a database shared between a small number of people sometimes. But that means that that data is not available. So trying to um, understand the whole student experience and to be able to support the student's um, experience with the university requires that we talk with support staff as well as the academic staff. Um, getting the support staff involved is generally quite easy because they're crying out to know more about what's happening with these students. The uh, students can go to a support hub and find help, but the academics don't know that the students using that support hub sometimes. So really just trying to plug the systems together. It's, it's like much of learning analytics is, is trying to just plug systems together. Those systems include people as well as technology. One of the concerns related to that, however, that we've had expressed from students as well as from support staff is what information is it appropriate or necessary for academics to see as opposed to student support? Um, what does the student want their personal tutor or their lecturer to see as opposed to what they've shared with their uh, student support counselor? So those are conversations that are absolutely necessary to have with the student uh, and to determine how that's going to be handled with, in terms of a uh, documentation process or who actually needs what information to do their jobs. One of the concerns uh, about implementing analytics is around uh, student consent. Um, this, this is quite a, a complicated area really. So th there are legal aspects which, which you know, it's, it's the law and need to be abided by. Sometimes then the, the ethical side is down to the way the institution wants to do business and, and be understood by their students um, and by their staff. In, in terms of the data that's used, we, we collect this data already and actually we often don't have a lot of choice about having to collect some of this data and having to report some of this data to governments. Um, data such as uh, assessment outcomes, if, if we didn't collect and use that data we wouldn't be able to give a student a certificate at all. So consent for me is difficult. If we put informed consent uh, on, on the table, I, I think I, I decouple those. So I'm absolutely in favour of informing students, engaging, involving students in the process so that students really do understand what data we use, well, why, why are we doing this, what data are we using and how are we using it. Um, and getting those students involved early, getting those students continuing to be involved, so students should be part of that governance, students themselves can become um, consumers of this data and demand the data. With that, um, yes, there's some elements of consent which might have uh, sensitivities, um, but they're, they're kind of dealt with as individual pieces rather than uh, the whole thing. So we might talk to students about if they visit counselling. That you know, we, We've got laws cover that kind of thing anyway. Um, it is really, really just about which pieces of information are personal, private, don't want sharing even who would you share that with? So you might share it with counselling if the person you went to see isn't there, somebody else can pick it up. But um, informed, absolutely informed from the beginning, students understanding at every stage how this is used. And I'd add a caveat that we can keep telling the students, we can tell them at induction, we can tell them we're using it, we can show them we're using it. Uh, some students will still turn around and say we didn't know. Um, so do everything sensible, but don't kill yourself trying to get the students to you know, really know what they've signed up to. De-identification of information um, is important, however, certain aspects of information has to be provided. Um, taking information such as a student's name um, and de-identifying that from a data perspective um, when we're running it through a data quality aspect for the predictive model is very important. Um, 
because we don't want to expose any sensitive student information. However, um, there are certain demographics that must be included from a data quality perspective when you run through a predictive model. One of the things that we have to take into consideration from a uh, predictive model perspective is things such as age, things such as gender. However, we have to be very careful from a data security perspective to not directly expose particular um, students um, based on information that could be sensitive. In our work, um, we ensure that the data protection laws are uh, understood mainly by the institution having already signed a data protection agreement with JISC prior to engaging in a learning analytics solution. It's really important for an institution to have that understanding with JISC so that they know what pieces of data will be captured, what pieces of data will be used, and how to explain it to other people within the institution.